Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. If you're looking for an easy way to live stream in your church, educational setting, or just simply somewhere on the move, this may be the solution for you. So I'm really excited. Tascam were cool enough to send this box through to me. And inside this box is a really tiny device that requires very little setup. And once you've done it, it's a set and forget box that will allow you to live stream. This is the Tascam VSR264. There are two flavors, the 264 and the 265. This one will do up to 1080p HD live streaming. If you get the 265 model, you can also stream in 4K Ultra HD, which is pretty awesome. Never again will you need to worry about drop frames in OBS. Uh, we had a little bit of an issue with live streaming. Windows updates or your computer simply crashing or not working after an update. The Tascam VSR264 and 265 operate completely independently of your computer, meaning you're not reliant on a computer at all to live stream anymore. Uh, so on the front, very simple SD card slot. So you can insert an SD card of any type in here and record your live stream at the same time that you're streaming it. You've also got lights to indicate power, overload, input, Input, streaming and recording. So very, very simple to use. On the back of the box, you've got professional balanced audio inputs and outputs, also an HDMI input and output, which can also send audio, by the way, and analog unbalanced 3.5 millimeter jack in and out for audio. Next to that, Ethernet and, I really like this as well, power over Ethernet. So that means you can plug in an Ethernet cable and get the power in the same source. So you get your internet connection and your power through that one input, which is brilliant. You've also got a DC 12 volt, uh, which can go to your mains as well. A really cool feature about this is that if you plug in the mains, it will power over mains. But if the mains goes out, for instance, you have a power failure, it will fall over to the power over Ethernet, which is a great backup, particularly if you've got power over Ethernet on an uninterrupted power supply. I'll be using a Ubiquiti switch to plug this in and power it as it provides the power over Ethernet Plus, which is needed to power this device. And that's all I need. Do pay special attention to the power over Ethernet Plus requirement. This unit requires up to 25 watts per port and not the usual 15 watts maximum that power over Ethernet provides. The same goes for just a standard Ethernet port. This device is either not going to come on or it will come on, but the lights will blink red, indicating not enough power is going to the unit. Don't forget there's also a USB input, so if an SD card isn't enough, you can connect up an SSD drive and you can have gigabytes or even terabytes of data recorded through this little device. So let's get stuck in and see how it works. You will need a computer to get started, but once you've got it all set up, all you need is the box to live stream. Grab the discovery tool from Tascam's website to find the IP address of your box, and then simply open it up in a web browser like this, and you can work on the encoder control. We'll look at that in a moment. Decoder, so you can watch a live stream here or simply pass through your HDMI signal from your camera so you can watch it on a confidence monitor. Something worth to note here is there is a slight delay of one or two seconds as you're seeing on the screen behind me here. And that is because you're seeing a decoded version of the live stream, the version your audience will see and not a direct pass through of the HDMI input. You've got device settings here. So you've got general settings here. Also security, if you want to add a password for people to log in. Network settings, NTP, if you want to have a time server to sync the time, if that's important to you. In advance, you can reboot, you can reset, you can manage your USB and SD cards, even update the software or debug if needed. We're going to focus on the encoder control here. And as you can see, there's no analog overload, which is good, no distortion. Once that's in one end, I can then go ahead and plug the other end into my camera. We've got an input resolution from the camera at the moment of 720p50. You might well have 1080p50 uh, or 1080p 25. Uh, you may also, if you're using the VSR265, have 2160p, uh, which of course would be 4K. At the moment, we're not streaming and we're not recording, so let's get set up. First of all, audio settings. You can choose whether you're going to use the HDMI embedded audio. That may be coming from your camera. Or if you've got a mixer, uh, then you want to go to balanced audio. There's also the option for unbalanced audio as well. For audio, I could very well go ahead and plug in 3.5 millimeter jack to the in and then the other end into my mixer or whatever it needs to be. Be, but I don't want to do that. Uh, unbalanced audio cables such as these, 
They suffer over length, meaning you get more hiss, hum, and problems with your audio over the length of the cable. And of course, if you match them with a power line or something like that, or some uh, AC or DC power cord, uh, you get all kinds of hum and terrible stuff. So balanced is the way to go. That's why I've got an XLR cable here. I have stripped the end, and on the end of this, I'm gonna strip further down the cables and stick on one of the lovely Euro blocks included, and then plug one end into the Tascam streaming device. The other end can go into a mixer, something like the Tascam Model 12 is perfect for mixing all your audio sources together. You can configure the encoder settings to do exactly what you need. So pass through will be simply whatever resolution is coming from your camera, but you can push that up to 1080p or down to 720 or I don't know why you'd want to do 320 by 180, but you can. You can also limit it to 30 frames per second if that's all you need for your stream. Uh, you've got variable or constant bit rate, keyframe interval, which for YouTube and other places is usually two. The quality can be high or lowest. This all works in the box, so you may as well push that up to high. Video encoding, most of you will want H.264, and then you can choose how many kilobits per second. Usually for YouTube at a 1080p stream, it'll be 6,000, and this will depend on your internet connection, so you can have more or less depending on how much you can push up your internet pipe. H.264 profile can stay on high, and audio, I always like to be the highest quality possible. You can go right up to 512 kbps. I think YouTube usually asks for 384, which is a pretty high quality uh, audio setting anyway, so let's click OK to that. We'll then go into output settings. This is where we can configure our live streams, and this is actually really cool. So first of all, we can set up an RTMP stream, but I'll come back to this in a moment because RTSP is pretty cool. I can switch this on and immediately when I click OK, it starts streaming uh, on the RTSP. And there we go, it's now streaming, you'll see that. Now if we open something like VLC Player, we can actually copy that URL there, paste it into Open Network Stream here, click play, and you should be able to test the live stream, and with a few seconds delay, you can see that this stream is working on RTSP. There are so many other different streaming protocols. You've also got file recording. If you insert an SD card, you can switch this on, and it will record your streams by hitting the recording button. FTP upload is really cool. Switch this on, and after every stream you do, and recording you do, you can upload your files uh, for an editor to work with afterwards. Now we're going to use RTMP output, and I use a service called Restream, which is really, really cool. It allows you to restream to multiple platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, all at the same time using one URL that they provide. And it's really, really cool. But right here, there is a YouTube integration, and we can simply start the pairing here. This is our pairing code. We copy this, log in via Google, enter the code, and then back in our streaming dashboard, we are able to select a live stream, click on here, and we will be live streaming immediately. Once this is set up once, all you have to do is hit stream on the front of the box, and you will go live immediately. It's one click easy. A couple of things to bear in mind, and one improvement possibly, maybe Tascam will release this in a future firmware update, you can only stream to one place at a time using RTMP. So that's only YouTube, only Facebook, or only Twitch, not all three at the same time. Maybe in the future we'll get a firmware update that will allow us to do multiple RTMP streams, that would be cool. Yes, you can stream using other protocols, uh, but not RTMP, which is required by YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and so on. Also, if you're in an audio critical environment like a studio, do not position this anywhere near a mic because there is a fan and it is quite whiny so you'd need to get it either far away from you in a rack or ideally in a server room or another room where you can have that whirring away without any interruption to the audio of your live stream. All in all this box is getting two thumbs up from me, absolutely amazing. If you want to set it and forget it in an environment such as a church, educational setting or anywhere on the move where you have ethernet with power over ethernet remember, then you can stream literally from anywhere. And once you've done the tech or the tech's been done for you, it's a set and forget, push the button to stream and you're on. Simple as that, could not be simpler. So if you want to live stream without the need for a computer and something that's reliable that isn't going to crash or fail, the Tascam VSR264 or VSR265 is an excellent solution. <laughs>
Kollektiv.com